Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, Welcome hey. to. Hey. Yeah, because we've got Kyle on the train in Australia, and we've got me here in my little home studio. And uh, so we're on an adventure into the unknown today. This is going to be exciting and fantastic. You've made it to the destiny of your soul. I'm Angela Talent. I wrote Poems from a Lost Soul, and I have the Relatively Damaged podcast. And Kyle, I'm going to introduce him today because, you know, we're just, we're in in the unknown world. Kyle is the author of Decide Your Destiny and the custodian of the Decide Your Destiny movement in Australia. So we're so glad everybody's here today to talk about entrusting your future to yourself. Now, there was also lots of homework last week. I don't know if you guys checked it out. Where did it go? I just had it up. Um, like, so many questions in our homework. Uh, let's see. Let me go down the list of, it was 11 questions. Uh, so Holy how much moly. of life is getting in? I know, right? Uh, how much of life is getting in our own way or tripping ourselves up? Number two, how much is getting in our own way? <laughs> well, maybe those are the two of the same question. How much is not seen clearly or getting caught up in the physical, technical, or mechanics of things? How much would you invest if you knew your dream would come true? How much would you investigate? How much would you commit? How far into your potential could you reach if you cleared away the garbage? Garbage beliefs, garbage people, garbage self criticism etc. How are you confronting that negative voice in your head? How can you be loving to the parts of you that you don't like? And then write out a list of types of mentors you want in your life and what areas. Example, spiritual, physical, financial, etc. And then what could a mentor help me with? Will this person help me achieve my goals? Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> That's a, yes. That's a mouthful, that one. Yeah, yeah. But this week is entrusting your future to yourself. Yes, yeah. Like we've been saying, the episodes we've been following uh, the book that I'm chapter by chapter, and then we've got the lovely Angela who's been providing poems for us to be able to, you know, align. So doing these podcasts, and so the, the, the chapter that I wrote was very, uh, I think it was the most feeling and probably the most, most controversial um, and most. Uh, Kind of sharing my truth, regardless if it's politically correct, uh, if it's um, um, appropriate by other authorities or whatever the case may be. It was just, hey, this is it. This, is it. whether you like it or not, take or leave it. This is this is how it is, and I think that's really where the title of today's show came from. Was kind of, you know, how do you entrust your future? You know, like, because otherwise we're on those. those the ends of those strings, like little, little ears or you know puppets, being pulled different sort of ways, and by our emotions. Um, and yeah, I mean that's what I took away from from the chapter from this episode. Yeah, I loved that chapter. You know, it was really interesting to me is that that you were really in the world of possibility and and unknown. You know. Uh, what could happen? And and there were so many people in in your world that that were certain, especially like clinicians and doctors that said, you need to go this way. And, and then you had Ward saying, well, there is another way. And I think at least for me, what would have been really difficult is figuring out what was the path for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like listening to the heart. In life. Yeah, constant with that, aren't we? Like seasons of life, changes in life, but then also maybe sometimes maybe too many opportunities, you know. And like in today's day, we've got so many opportunities, maybe on career-wise, or you know, this person became TikTok famous here, this person seen it, and then in your mind you got all these opportunities, and then it's like, well, what do I take? And there. Or what's the next step? Well, right. And I think, though, too, one of the big things you pointed out or that I, I 
I recognize in that chapter is that there are always these other people in the world that are certain they know the right path for you. And I don't, I no longer believe that to be true, but how do you, you know, it's, it's almost like you have to experience that, um, to have that experience to know, oh, no, I only, I can only know what's right for me. Like, um, I have a, a little thing behind my computer here. <laughs> it says, Tell us, yeah, reveal, reveal. Yeah. You have the urge to give unrequested advice, whether allowed or in your mind, or you find yourself thinking that you know what's right for someone else. Ask yourself, whose business am I in? My opinion, and I know what's right for someone else. Then listen to your own advice and know that you're not the one. It's you're the one it's meant for. Stay in your own business and be happy. I like that. I can't remember where I found it or if I made it up. I have no idea. <laughs> that you came out of you. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it came out of me. But I do have, uh, and by the way, everybody, listeners, we are going to have a little shorter episode today because like Kyle, it's a busy day here in the States. <laughs> He's in Australia. I'm in the States. <laughs> And I, we, I've, I've got to leave at quarter, quarter to the hour. So, um, so Just I want to get in. I actually, that poem. I actually, that, that yeah, that I, poem. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, you're fine. Cause we have a little bit of a lag, but, um, so I wrote this poem many, a few weeks ago for this chapter. And then today I actually wrote another one, not even realizing what we were talking about. And then I was reviewing what we were talking about. So I have two. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. Okay, so this one is called uh, Possibility. What is possible? Could it be anything? How do you know? What do you see? When was it made? Where did it come from? Could it be it was once just a dream, just a possibility? Choo, 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 choo. I absolutely love that. <laughs> I love that one. I mean, but... <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I absolutely love that. That's um, kind of opened your, your mind a little bit more, you know? Um, when you send it to me, that's what I felt. Like, who chose this way for you? Who made this up for you? Who created this for you? You know, it's up to your own. It's going to be put on. And then, you, you broke up. Sorry. Really loved it. Really, really loved it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think for me, I, I love the idea of the questions in the poem. You know, how do you know? You know, what's possible? How do you know? How do you know? It's it's like the this deep knowing, and it's there in all of us uh, that that knowing. Now, also, I think sometimes we have to travel into the unknown to figure out what's possible. And it's actually, I'm, I'm reading a book, Transcend, by uh, Scott Barry Kaufman that is fantastic. But this one, so, th so this is the poem that I wrote today. I delight in the adventure of the unknown, finding its surprises, its insights, its delights. When I explore what I have not seen, I find great gifts of knowledge and peace, which inevitably replace my fear and anxiety. And I think sometimes we have to make friends with the unknown, especially if we're going to entrust our future to ourselves and learn to trust our hearts and learn to trust our soul and what we feel compelled to do and know that it's going to be okay. Exactly, exactly. And so much. Uh, what I, I my, that poem to me was just opening your mind, just being able to open what being told, what you've been, you know, what realities that have kind of been damned on you, but have been laid on you. And, you know, why, why, why am I making this up? You know, who, who's sown? The seeds of the, you know, I can only be this. I can only do this. Doors closed. 
Okay, it's only this way, so like that way. I think there's it's like a, a, a equilibrium, it's like balance of okay, I love it, but then when you when you choose do something, immerse yourself, go into it. When you want to actually go, okay, this is the direction that I believe is the right direction. It's time, and then that's how you actually work out, and you don't have that life of regret going. I want pathway what I have discovered what I really should have been doing you know so, so. yeah and, and you broke up a little so, bit so I'm going to cut cut in and you're probably still talking but uh, I think, I think sometimes I'm cutting in because you're because you broke up <laughs> I, I think I don't think we've totally lost you yet but I think that sometimes like we have to figure out who we are we have to find that purpose and and we know when we're off but i think in today's world in today's society it is so easy to go the path that's normally traveled right it isn't isn't there i think there's a poem you know the 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 path less traveled or something like that um and yeah. it's it's easier to go the well-worn path that everyone says, oh, well, you need a nine to five job and you need this and you need this and you need this instead of really listening to the core of who we are. And what happens when we get stuck in those holes of not trusting ourselves? I think, I think perspective, perspective is, is a big, is a big, is a tool, a big tool to use, you know, uh, I think probably for both of us to get on these channel lives to be able to do, you know, I'm not saying that this is something that no one else can do. Plenty of people do, do the books and do the writing and ask questions and confront ourselves down, our, you know, belief systems and, 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 and all those sorts of things. I think it, and, you know, sometimes that perspective happens because of things happen into your life. But sometimes that perspective cut the world around you. And you're going, well, <clears throat> and if you've seen, seen the full spectrum of life, you don't need to hold my grandfather's hand, you know, as he passed away. And um, very sad, sad obviously, because you know, he was like a father to me and raised me. Being able to hold his hand and, and, and see the past, the physical and the spiritual go beyond, you know, being able to be in that in in that moment, it kind of deflated a lot. I mean, today's day, I think I've spoken about this before, but today's about, you know, we don't, we don't show death, we show sex, you know, or sex in terms of mainstream media, things like that, you know. And I think sometimes it's become being aware of the kind of journey that we're all on, you know, the, the finite physical. And then the infinite spiritual become aware of that, then you want to play more in the infinite spiritual. You know, what? I know I've got a headache. I know I'm tired. I know I'm I'm stressed out. I know I've got all, all these different people and part life part I should take. But as a spiritual being, you know, if my spirit continues on to be doing now, that actually brings pride brings heart to that spirit, you know, to that soul. I think when you do that, that's kind of um, clarifying what direction you need to take. And I heard this as well the other day, it was something along the lines of um, the restriction uh, freedom um, is the discipline of action, something like that. Like, so sometimes if you go, I... Like you limit you limit yourself in certain areas, so then you can only go forward. I can't go left, and you know I can't go turn left. I can't, I can't turn right. Forward here, you know. And so sometimes you 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 will put on restrictions for yourself. You know, from five to seven, this is my time in the morning. I work out. Yeah. I, I get to do, but you're but it's the, the restriction of freedom is like the discipline of action. I, I, I totally see saying you will be more disciplined with your actions 
to restrict the freedom, creative creativity of oh maybe I can do this, maybe I can be spontaneous over there, maybe I could just be there. It's like but if you know it's five to seven times is important for me to get my medicine. Do this, do that. Yeah. Then you're able to have action. Right. Yeah. And and just real quick, I think a little bit of even what you're talking about. Paul Fortune is here. Hi, Paul. And he is he's a good friend of Howdy, mine. Paul. And he he is he is in charge of the re- rewrite your story movement, <laughs> uh, which takes Woo. a look at some of those past things, you know, and what are the stories that we're telling ourselves and how can we rewrite them so that we can see those possibilities like like that we're talking about, you know, and I think that comes down to the topic we're talking about even is entrusting your future to yourself. And if the story that you believe about yourself is so negative and so, you know, you're always beating yourself up or you're always telling yourself bad things, then there's no way that you can that you can move forward, that you can even see the possibilities because they couldn't possibly exist in those old stories. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And part of the trust is burning off the past, you know, and a lot of that past are those, a lot of us, is those negative feedback loops of what what we, uh, you know, we've told ourselves, you know, and there is, there's, there, there, sometimes there is comfort in feeling like a victim. There is comfort in, oh, poor me, me and my struggles and my woes in this lifetime. There, there, there well, isn't that the known, that. though? That, yeah. Right, that's the that's the known. That's the well-traveled path for a lot of us. Yes, yeah, that's why I'm trying to get out. Yeah, and yeah. it's so hard to, to, I think, get out of that that mindset it, or it can be because what happens is it feels awkward and weird. It doesn't feel right at first. And, um, you know, again, the, the meditation that I was teaching the kids at school, a few of them did exactly what happened to me. You know, they went up in coherence. They could get in the green and then they would crash. And they get and I'd work them, help them get back to the green and they would crash. And a lot of times that happens because we're un, we're comfortable in the red and uncomfortable in the green, even though it's it's not the healthiest place to be in the red. That's when we're in dysregulation. We're out of coherence. So it does. It feels awkward and weird. I will never. Well, I, I will forget exactly. I don't. I, it happens slowly for me. The process of getting to have peace in my home and quiet, and to be okay with that. It 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 and it had to slowly happen. But it and it first it you know when I tried to force it, it was it was tough. <laughs> it is. It is. But that that, that tough that toughness. Well, that struggle, all that. there's beauty in that too, you know. Oh, yeah, there's, there's beauty in that kind of you, you fell down, you scratch it, scrape your knee, you know, sweat the blood. There's beauty in that, you know, that's part of, part of your soul, you know? yeah. Like, why, yeah, else that... would you, why else would you keep going? Why, like, why? You know, yeah, it doesn't make to push through that. Yeah. No, you're reminding me of the question I asked at my family breakfast to everyone. You know, what strengths did you gain from a failure you had this year? Yeah. I think you asked that on the podcast too. I think that was one of the homeworks. Yeah, I still love that (laughs) question. (laughs) Because it reminds me that with every failure, with every challenge, that what's going to happen is... I'm going to learn something. So now failure, it doesn't have to be so scary. Whereas before failure meant I became a failure or I, instead of, instead of just, oh, there was a failure, it was, I am a failure or like Brene Brown talks about, I am a mistake. Well, that wasn't true. It never was true. It just was, I made a mistake or I had a failure. The I am is, is over here separate from those words. 
but that that shows you and you know the point of point of like your future is kind of working out how well conducive to the future that you want and i think a big, big part of it is is we attach our identity to the failures or, or to our beliefs or to you know or to whatever it is but because we we attach those okay you know it's where it's, it's got to be that kind of disconnect you know and that's where you see a lot of life and they're they're more you know ah oh, crap now yeah that happened but you know i came out out of it you know and people that can have like the world's hate with our keyboard heroes and somehow still come out the next morning and people that can be cancelled off the face of earth and like literally basically digitally you know um and you hear some of these stories of some of these people um and it's simple oh it's cancelled like uh uh-huh like uh well i'll go again next time i'll try to say it's it's destructive it's 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 a a serious and like their business everything is just totally wiped out it's like they're they're digital and so for me like you see some of these people and then they come back there's people that play in life you know and and, and they're able to play in life because who they are to Jim Rong was done to me you know or you know, my belief has been challenged, so that means I've been challenged at the core of being that I am. You can't really evolve if you're so identity is so connected and so, like maybe a momentary belief or opinion. You know, I think that this is the evolution. You got to be able to go into the soul and, and your future growth is that spiritual evolution. Is that okay? Yep, I've got physical, you know, physical sleeve that I'm wearing for this period of time of my lifetime. But there's something deep, and the beauty in life is that we all have that opportunity to kind of evolve, guard some of the old, the old ways, you know, and, and forward, and, and how that can, that can better help us in the future. I think mm-hmm. the questions that, that you ask and, 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 and you know, like failure, I mean, failure is such a, how else are you going to learn? Like, but I, I learn best by trying. I learn best by trying. And, and at the moment, I've got a few, few different um, opportunities with career and, and like different things I can do. And, and there's so many different like, like directions. And it's, I'm someone who I just want to sink my teeth into it. I'm, hungry i want to get get stuck in i want to just be running down or i want to be just running down that, that road like full pelt and just like going to that discovery a little, little here like going okay which 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 way do i take aim and then launch and for me a big part of a big part of the, the, the challenge of big and, and, and what way you want to go is right that fear of not failing like, oh, but what if I do this and it's not perfect? What if I, what if I try that and, and, and someone rejects me? People don't like it or they don't like to see me in this. And that's the kind of the mental, like, have on us. And we've got to kind of go, all right, let me walk down each path, rejection, experience that rejection, and, and see which one, oh, I'm following my own sword for this direction. Or I'm willing to go... The, the, the whole hundred miles of this stretch. When, when you look at failure, I mean, like failures or challenges or trial and errors, you need to rise. Well, and isn't in you know in failure and things like that, like life happens in the 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 arena, right? We had that quote by Theodore Roosevelt a few weeks ago. It is not the critic who counts. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the re- the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. And and it's the face that's marred by sweat and blood and dust that is that like they're 
there's truly living there. Not not to live in the mess, but to try to like what you're saying, to go into that unknown. So for instance, um, Maslow, Maslow said, our healthy subjects are generally unthreatened and unfrightened by the unknown. They accept it, are comfortable with it, and often are even more attracted by it than the known. And I think that when we're willing to fail, we're, we're going to the I don't know world right? That we've talked about so often. It's just how do you get to feel safe there, right? Like, what are some tools so that I can feel safe there? Well, for me, it was a sign that said, stay curious. And right underneath it, how will I be surprised today so that I could remember that I wanted to be in the unknown world? Because that's the only world that really existed anyway. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. It's true. It's true it's that's the kid that's exploring that's picking something up that's you know trying something out getting the note and then and it's and and having that experience to go okay like that didn't work that way how to make sure i don't fall down and hurt myself i mean that's part of failure as well is going okay we're not saying we're saying um like just seek out failure or um you keep failing something it's like you know you'll fail and then you go okay like who do i need to bring into my life to help me that's what mentor what what bit of material what book do i need to read on this you know um to actually let go of mm-hmm. that is causing me to kind of like you know a lot of times like the scar the waste that is, is kind of being carried with you and then you know, so it's like kind of, kind of you go for a job right and if you go for a job or you're going to, your mind, your mind instantly goes to that power sort of struggle. Right? Well, how do I kind of like, you know, like, oh, no, you need to go in there as the question asking, how can I help Tristan? Like, really show that you're listening, sort of thing, rather than, oh, they want to see. They know you don't know everything. Like, you're starting the job, you know? Um, you don't need to have that sort of posture of like, Point me where to go, I'll go there. You know, and so like, that's like maybe an old, like an old wasted crap that I had discard of and have a better chance at the next job. So um, I think that's a big part of it as well. Your future, you know, it's, just, it's like, okay, what can I get rid of? What can I throw away? What can I discard? And then who, who do I need to bring into my life? Who had this fat? Um, oh, crap, I keep bumping my head up against this, this root. This kind of invisible something that happened to my childhood where I was told you won't be nothing, you can't ever mount to you know, something that my partner, this, you know, the person I'm in a relationship with, or like a, or a friendship, or, or whatever. And I know that, and so I kind of I, I keep stifling myself. And so that's where you, you know, you go for failure, go for the things that are like, like, all right, let me give this thing a go and look, hey, I'm going to learn a shit done. And then also, Bring to your world to help you be able to go for it. I mean, look at sports, look at you know athletes and everything. You know, look how much they, train. you know, they like how many millions of dollars they invest in their body. You know, not or invest into banks, or invest into the lottery, or invest like wherever or invest in coal and cigarettes. They invest millions of dollars into their body, into their. Well, yeah, and they've. Yeah, I was going to say, and and they have all these people, again, telling them, you know, and they may get conflicting advice. And so then they've got to they've got to trust that they can make the right decision for them. And and that's where I think a lot of people might be getting stuck is is in trusting themselves. So with you, like you made the decision, Ward was there to help. You, you trust it. And then I think you even started doing the meditation and you had vitamins hidden in the drawers and things like that, right? So <laughs> it's like you knew. You read that book good. <laughs> I did. I did. But you knew at some point that you were like, no, this is the path. And then you even hid it from other people, to, you know, from, from the clinicians and things like that. 
in, until of course they found the, the vitamins and everything, but you knew the path you needed to take for you. So, so how did you come to that conclusion? Was it a feeling? Was it um, something that happened in a conversation? When did you know for certain, oh, this is the path? So I think the, the best thing I had was just being laid out as best as I could. And I guess this is where, you know, you can do this visually in your mind. You can communicate it to you and share it. But what basically said, hey, this is this is all the paperwork. This is the information. Read surgery right now. You have all these sorts of things that will happen. Like this is what they're going to cut. This is, commencing. This is like how your life's going to be altered. So I could see into the future. See what see what be you know compared to what I had envisioned um, when I was going to be. And then and the other way, I could, it was a little bit more hazy, but I could see the, the trust and the conviction that Ward had. And I think there's time, times where you believe yourself in the future. And then you also sometimes go, hey, I'm, look, I'm just going to have faith into you. You've done, you've shown me time after time. And you look at the history. Time after time, you've done the right thing. You've got the right ethics and morals and you're, you're a student and you and I'm gonna put my I'm gonna trust you to guide me to my better future. What, what a lot of it was, to be honest with you. I didn't have the data, I didn't have the information, I didn't have the extent. You know, I, I barely yeah. had the information that he had. But he, he explained it clearly very logical. He showed me what the direction what happens here and at the end of the day I don't know if this is an answer people want to hear but it had to come down to trust it had to come down to me going uh, and, I, and I'd rather trust you with my future than this other direction and I uh, other direction years later like Three, people clear. that are out there um, you know who who um, you know, like having surgeries and different sorts of things and, and procedures. But, but I was in a better position. And at that time, I was not in a good position. So it could be done at that time. Um, right. Procedures were very, very um, for my future and, and very, yeah. very impactful. So for me, I had a position first and see what I can do first. And the Peruvians have this belief, kill your body first, you know, um, go, and, go, go, and try, go and try and see what you can do first. If that doesn't work, go, go see like the clinician and any advice. I'm not sharing anything. I'm not telling anybody what to do with your own life. You've got to buckle up and make the list of your future and your family's future. But all I'm saying is that this is not a med. It's something that people have been doing for thousands of years. Yes. Yeah, and I think too, uh, entrusting your future to yourself. Because I've I asked this question of of someone else trying to to get in and how do you know, right? How do you know that it's the right choice for you? And there is a sensation, there is a feeling, and only you can can decide what that is for you, or figure, or not even decide. I think sometimes you have to go inside of yourself to understand, to become self-aware so that you can hear what you want or your soul wants. And so we've only got about five minutes. So I'm thinking of homework and I'm, I'm really thinking if there's a decision that you've got to make any decision, just sit with it go and be quiet and sit and don't maybe don't even think about that decision go in with an intention that you'll have some insight or something about it but just sit and listen to maybe ask a question about about the decision and just sit and listen to your body like really feel into it which is which is hard to explain <laughs> well, feel I'm into your you body try. and <laughs> I'll leave it up to you here from here, it's over to you. It's over to me? Okay. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You, you, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. 
I get it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people might not understand that. If you don't understand it, please reach out, have a card, let me know. I will do my best to articulate what that means. Ultimately, it's getting back in touch with who you are and taking back the reins to learn what does it feel like to trust myself. So maybe if you don't trust yourself at first, it will be following, making an agreement with yourself and following through on that agreement and seeing what that feels like and how it impacts you. Maybe it will be, well, do I trust? I think I already trust myself. Well, what happens if you break an agreement with yourself? Then what does that feel like? You know, you kind of have to turn it into a game. What does trusting myself feel like? What does not trusting myself feel like? How do I do that? You know? Yes, exactly, exactly. And I think attached onto that, let me know if this is well, but I was thinking something along the lines of, maybe a decision coming up if you've got, you know, you're in between two things and you know, in, in between, between two challenges or two ways, or two pathways, what to take direction in. Um, probably work out what, one, what do I have to give up? What ideas, what beliefs, what, what's something I have to give up? Um, two, what put in? What, 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 who do I need to see? What do I need to, what help do I need to get? So for me, um, traditional photography business is what I did for a long time. And uh, just looking at, okay, like how do I, um, you know, do stuff more online or, or a book? You know? So for, first thing I had to give up was those, kind of, those, those ties that I sewn to why I couldn't, who do I feel? <coughs> and when I mentioned the book, some of the reactions that people had, you know, like, so, and then I had to go and get, get someone who could help me write the book and articulate the story. And so, so you know, that could be someone who have a digital mentor, you could have someone online who you're following, like video calls with, um, but that's, that, that's the strategy that I took. So then I could myself, because I was making the right decisions. I was getting rid of the stuff that was going to corrupt my future and then I was, I was going to help. It's like, all right, I've got to stop having the alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs> now let me put it in the alcohol. That's the base premise of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a minute. So if it's okay with you, I think we've got enough homework. And um, I think, <laughs> yeah, are you good? Are you good? Because I've got to get a child to work. <laughs> <laughs> I just well that and I want to thank you for attempt to doing this on the train and me and my crazy day of, of having to we had to move things around so I just want to say thank you and thank you to our yeah. listeners and and those that are watching and following and there there will be transcripts of this if if you need it um i know that the audio was a little a little off today but uh i think we mostly got the points and we'll make sure to put them in the show notes for next week so i'm angela that's kyle and this is the destiny of your soul and we shall see you next week bye-bye guys have a great week <laughs> bye